Welcome to Paw Prince on the Mountain. I'm Tommy Boy from Wet Mountain Radio. My co-host Dina Pace is with me. How are we doing today, Dina? Good, Tommy. How are you? I'm doing all right. As the temperatures are warming up, a lot of things cross my mind. Um, right off the bat, I want to talk about folks that are leaving their, their pets in the car and uh, how that, I would imagine that's, that's a big issue this time of year. Wow. You know, it is. Um, we run across that. I've got dogs of my own and a cat, and uh, you know, everyone thinks that their dogs want to go everywhere with them. They don't necessarily want to go everywhere with them. Yeah. You know. Um, if the choice is to miss you for a little bit, or you know, they're much safer at home absolutely. out of that heat where they can, you know, just lay in the house or be out under a tree or whatever they do normally. But not all of them enjoy. They cannot be left in cars. You know, with the wind with the windows up and and have you guys seen um facebook and and on the news and stuff all the time it's got how hot Absolutely. the cars actually heat up a fireman or somebody will sit in the car and they'll keep the temperature going to see exactly and you know even up here it's cooler than down in the valley but it's still very hot and these animals are not safe being left in a car another thing crossed my mind i wanted to start the show with we didn't have fireworks this year and I, I would imagine that's kind of a crazy time for you when that does happen. It is. You know, though, we're up in Lakeside, so we don't get it probably as much as what the city of Sholo does. <clears throat> but, you know, anytime there's gun work, f guns being fired off and all that, you know, it really definitely plays a toll on the animals. But with the 4th of July, even though there weren't the fireworks, people, you know, have company, they have picnics, whatever, and the dog may slip out the gate. They don't know it until they go to put the dog away for the night or whatever. Brought that up because when a dog goes missing, one of the very first things they should think of is the Humane Society of the White Mountains. You're absolutely right because we are the only Humane Society up here in all the White Mountains serving both Apache and Navajo County and, of course, the White Mountain Apache Reservation. Let's touch on how you come across the animals that you do. I mean, of course, if a dog runs off scared at a barbecue, good chance it comes there. But the area from where they come is, could be a lot larger than we realize. You know, that's something that we do talk about on the radio quite a bit, isn't it? And that's because, you know, we get animals, people may be traveling up through Payson, through Globe, and they see this stray dog, and they pick it up, and they bring it to us. Right. Because, again, we're the only humane society. And so now we've got this poor dog, and if it doesn't have any identification or a microchip, how are the people that live in Globe going to find this sure. animal or in Payson or... You know, so we always put the animals that come into us as strays out on our Facebook. So definitely watch our Facebook. And, uh, but, you know, if there's no identification, then it's really tough. We usually cannot find an owner. And if you're looking for an animal, best thing to do is come down. And you mention on the phone when someone's describing the animal, they may see a color a little differently than you. Yeah, absolutely right. Now, actually, here's a prime case of that. Um, there was this dog missing and we both the Debbie the manager and myself seen it on Facebook and because the dog that was on Facebook had blue eyes right. we knew it was not this dog got it well it turns out it is that dog nine years later oh okay got it. so picture. they put the puppy picture up there on Facebook so at, at least we are able to reunite them but the thing is you know your description and, and, and everything please just come in we're open Tuesday through Fridays from 1030 to 5 and Saturdays 10 to 5 and the best way to see about your pet coming back to you is to come in, you know, and look and see what we have as stray pets. And then also do the re lost report with us. Because just because we don't have it right now doesn't mean we won't have it next week. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So you know? we could be keeping, keeping it for a couple more days and bringing it in. Correct. And, and the other thing is if... If you can afford $20, we do microchipping. We register it for that price also. And then as long as you keep up the information on that chip, that information will always get your pet back to you if it goes to any vet's office, animal control, uh, humane society. A while back, we had one that had been missing out of Phoenix and was found out by Shumway a year later. Really? And, and it came to us. And we called the owner, <coughs> and he goes, are you kidding? He was down in Phoenix. What gets me, too, is... Um, without accurate information on that card, it severely hurts your chance of getting your animal back. It does. And it can't take too long or, or be that complicated. No, absolutely not. And like I say, for the $20, we actually register it for you. And then, you know, if your information changes, you've got all the information you need to make that change with the microchip company. Let's talk about the fact that all of the vet offices have the ability, or most, to scan those chips. Absolutely, a microchip scanner. And they're all pretty much I international now. And that means, you know, animals from other countries and stuff. So, and most animal control officers also have them. 
So like when you see Navajo County animal control out, one of the first things they do is they scan that animal to see if it has a microchip. And right. a lot of times uh, the animal control officers, if they do, they will even, you know, or if they have a phone number with a tag on, they will call that number and take that pet right back home before they ever have to bring it to us. One of the things we were doing the other day, we had your web page open was on the radio because we do this weekly radio show. Um, I did not know about the wish list online. This is brilliant. This talks to exactly what you need in any given moment. It does. You know, and, and our needs are always there. The needs never go away. You know, someone can, you know, one of the things like laundry soap and bleach is on our list. What a lot of people don't know is every animal in our shelter gets clean toys, clean bedding, clean dishes every day. Every so, day. Every day. So our washing machines start at 7 in the morning and they run till 5 at night. Sounds like you got a bunch of teenagers, but instead it's all the animals. We got a bunch of homeless animals. <laughs> So, yeah, so laundry soap and bleach, you know, everyone goes, oh, I just took, you know, six gallons of bleach out last week. Six gallons of bleach doesn't last us long. Wow. You know, laundry soap, we should actually, you know, if anybody does stocks and stuff, you ought to buy it in laundry soap or bleach because Perfect. of the amount that shelters use, you know, so. You're watching Paw Prints on the Mountain, Tommy and Dina Pace. We come back up more topics. You're kind of looking behind the scenes of the Humane Society of the White Mountains. Welcome back to Paw Prince on the Mountain. I'm Tommy Boy, my co-host Dina Paste. How are we doing? Good. Okay, well, one of the things I wanted to do in this segment was take an entire segment, or most of it, talking about the adoption process, what it takes for somebody, I mean, from the beginning to the end. Do you recommend somebody comes down or uh, make a phone call? Uh, what kind of questions do you ask? Oh. I'm going to ask all the questions at one time and have you just come back and get all of them. Okay. I'm teasing you. Okay. What's the first step for someone who's adopting a pet? I think, I think the first step is either you're going to look on our website, which is www.hswm.org, right. and you're going to click on adoptions, and you're going to look at our adoptable animals. Or, better yet, you're going to come look at them. And <clears throat> so when you come out to our shelter, you're going to come into the front office, and we always ask you to sign the guest book. Sure. And then we're going to get one of our kennel techs and they're going to take you back. They're going to talk to you a little bit, see what kind of pet you're looking for. First, are you looking for a cat or a dog? Right. You know, because they're definitely in different areas. Sure. And then, you know, what, what I like to ask when I'm doing an adoption is, what's your lifestyle like? You know, are you active? Are you hiking? Are you biking? Are you camping? Or are you more the type that likes to, you know, go for little walks or, you know, stay home most of the time? And uh, I think because some dogs are suited for different things. Oh, sure. Really. You know, or if you're looking for a certain breed. Hey, you wouldn't want to ask somebody about being sedentary like myself and the dog is a go-getter and wants to run. Right, because then that's not fair to the dog or to you, right. you know, the adopter. So, but we can, I mean, we have dogs of different ages and, and of course, their energy levels and stuff. So that's one of the things that, that you need to know is what exactly you are looking for. What do you expect out of this pet? Do you have any kids? Right. Do you have kids? Have they been around pets? Do you have other pets? Are they dog friendly, cat friendly? Things like that. Why, and then, you, why would you, I'm sorry, why would you ask if they own a rent? Because I know we give this question a lot. We do. We do. Because if they rent, you know, we have to have landlord approval. Makes sense. You know, because we've seen that happen when they get the pet home and the landlord goes, oh, no, that's too big or, you know, you, you can't have that. And then the animal has to come back. And the worst thing is to watch an animal in an adoption that doesn't work out. Yeah, me too. You know, the pet seems to take that like they did something wrong. Got it. And so, you know, we also tell me, someone may come in looking for something specific. Say right. I come in and I go, I want a chocolate lab. You know, well, we don't have any chocolate labs, but would you like to see what we do have or something? You know, if you come in open, a lot of times those pets pick you. Yeah, that's a weird concept of the uh, dog or the cat actually picking the owner. So you keep an open mind when you go in. You do. And you know, I was somewhere this morning and this little dog, um, actually I was out collecting donations, which we'll go into later, but okay. this little dog was in an office with someone and immediately the little dog come around and, and jumped up on my leg and wanted me to pick it up. 
you know? And animals can sense if you like them or if you're a good person or something, I do believe. And it, it was funny because when I was walking out the door, this same, and this little dog was only about this big. And I heard it, and it sounded like it was that big barking at somebody else that was trying to go into the office. Nice. So pets pick you if you listen to them. And all really these pets want to do is please you. Right. Well, now we did talk about the, the anguish and, and what it's like for a pet that goes and comes back. Is that an often occurrence or most of them go and stay? Most of them go and stay. That's our goal is to make sure that we can make that a good match. Right. Um, you know, and, and so that's why we ask the questions we do, sure. you know, t to make it a good match for you, the adopter, and of course the pet that you're adopting. Now if you're thinking of adopting, HSWM has most, some, not most, of the pets on there under adoptions. Correct. And a little synopsis that talks about the pet. That goes back to talking about making it a good adoption process. Absolutely. And you know, um, all of our pets come spay or neutered, microchipped, and they're up to date for their age on vaccines. And then we also, like with our dogs, we do what we call a safer test. Okay. And that's, you know, we do different things to see, like if maybe they have food aggression or if we think they'll be better with big kids instead of little ones, um, and how they seem to get along with other dogs, too. I noticed when we do our weekly show, uh, that information is pretty accurate in that you definitely took the time. If, if it's not a cat dog and it's just all dog, uh, right. you've taken the time to find that out. Yes. Yeah, our kennel techs do all that stuff. And, you know, because we do want to know if this dog's going to get along with cats or this, you know. And uh, so we do the best we can to find out as much information as we can about every animal. And so many of them are strays when they come to us, which makes it really hard to, you know, know their stories and stuff. Um, you have specials that go on depending on you just can... It can go by age, it can go by, who's in charge of the specials for adopting the animals? That would be Debbie, the okay. manager. Mm -hmm. She kind of gets to pick, we'll take $10 off this. Or right. Mm -hmm. Like when we do the radio show, I go, so who do you want for pet of the week? You know, and sometimes she includes the whole staff in a morning meeting, which is pretty cool, yeah. you know. So they all get to pick, you know, who they think should be. So. I want to thank you for putting us on your Facebook page as well. Because we do the animal, uh, the uh, Humane Society Pet of the Week show. There it is. You're, you're actually yeah. plugging 98.5. Yeah. Of course, we appreciate what people do for us. And, you know, if you look on there, we also have pages that have all the businesses that give us business memberships or that, that sponsor us or donate to us. And we believe that, you know, we really want to encourage people to shop to the people that help us. Makes sense. And I know that it costs a pretty big chunk to keep that running every day. We come back, we'll talk about where you get your money. One of the biggest fundraisers every year. Yep. And it is... Happy Tales. Happy Tales. It's Tommy Boy and Dina Pace on Paw Prince, and we'll be right back. <music> Welcome back to Paw Prince on the Mountain. I'm Tommy Boy with White Mountain Radio. Today with Terry and Sally. And you guys are going to talk today mostly about... The big fundraiser. Happy Tales. Happy Tales. Now, this kind of snuck up on us. You know, we all own a calendar, and it, there it was all along, but now here it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the things you're involved in, a role that you do in Happy Tales that keeps you going? Well, both Sally and I are co-chairs. Okay. Um, Dina needed some help, and we didn't stand back quick enough. And she, <laughs> she, she one step backwards. Yeah, and she exactly. held her hands up. And yeah. if we're not at a meeting, we're assigned. No, I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So we're co-chairs no, really. and um, just having a ball. This yeah. is the 13th annual? 13th annual. How long have you been involved on your on a personal level? Um, I have been a volunteer with the Humane Society for eight or nine years. I can't really remember. Um, but I'm actually the off-site adoption chair. Okay. I oh, that's why you're over there. Adoptions, adoption. Exactly. We heard you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We do the adoptions at Pet Sense every Saturday. Uh, we do events down in the valley with a group, a rescue, a coalition of rescue groups that we belong to, um, and just work with the shelter people, with Debbie, with Dina, in trying to get these beloved dogs and cats homes. And by the way, we had a pig last week. Yeah, that's what I, I saw them. Yeah. So uh, yourself. Yes. I've only been on the mountain for eight years. Okay. Got involved with Humane Society six years ago. And I don't work at the shelter like these girls do, but I do more of the fundraising side. Got it. 
uh, AZ Gibbs program that we have in, in April, and then full on with Happy Tales. <laughs> AZ Gibbs was a success. Happy yeah. Tales is always a success. Yeah. So you must really know what you're doing as far as fundraising. I'm trying. <laughs> You're the one that they haven't fired me yet. That's right. Let's put it that way. You're the one I would imagine that's going to darken some doorsteps, walking in looking for uh, sponsors and. Uh, well, actually, we have to give that credit to our team of volunteers. Really? Our volunteers Amazing. this year are just absolutely incredible, knocking on doors. We have lists of potentials. They go in and get them, and they bring them back to us. Now we stage ourselves up at Chrissy's Ski and Board yep. up in Pine Top. And we accept all the donations up there. We process them and we decide where they go into the events. I see on Facebook that Chrissy's is where you can get the tickets as well right, we've to try to win them. the hog. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really a hog. <laughs> well, a little yeah. bit of a scooter. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's uh, $10 a piece, correct? Right, yes. And the you're going to sell, is there a cap? Only going to sell so many tickets? Last year we had a boat and we sold 1,420 tickets. Wow. Yeah. Brought 14, over fourteen thousand dollars. And when we talk about that motorcycle and those tickets, where are other places you can get those tickets? They have them at the doghouse thrift store. Okay. And we have them at Chrissy's. Okay. And we have a whole lot of people on the street that have them in their pockets, and you can get them at the shelter as well. Yeah. Someone's here. Go ahead. Uh, I just. We are at Chrissy's. We, Sally, <laughs> and some other volunteers, um, are at Chrissy's Monday through Friday. Okay. From ten to three. So I think that's important that everyone know that. Absolutely. Let's uh, talk about Happy Tales for a second. You got something that we're throwing around. Maybe someone doesn't know exactly what it is. Paint me a picture. I walk in Happy Tales. Right. What am I seeing? Sure. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> we're going to tangle on this. Uh, it is the largest fundraiser that we have for the Humane Society. When I came on board, they were uh, donations were in the 300 number of donations that were received and then put in the various areas uh, for, for the auction. And last year we were at 883. Yeah. So what we have is we have a live auction section. Uh, and Mark Sterling is our uh, MC and our auctioneer. Okay. And he just really works, <laughs> works the crowd. Uh, so we have the live auction area. Generally, those are higher end items, generally uh, uh, more focused to, well, we had snowmobiles last year we have a bunch of golf pi packages this year we have a one of those pedal assist bikes and some things like that nice okay then we have a uh, our silent auction area which had so many items in it that a person couldn't possibly get around to see all of them in one in one fell swoop so we've parceled part of that off into what we call a general store and boutique and that is because there's a lot of people that are intimidated about bidding on things sure so in that area they can go ahead and buy it and take it so in addition to that we have a, what's called the blitz auctions which are real quick auctions for uh old guns and things like that yeah and those are just up for a little while mm -hmm. yeah there yeah there's an x number of tickets are sold once they're sold in the crowd Got it. the the ticket is called and then we have a five dollar raffle bucket you can buy tickets five dollars a piece or five for twenty and drop them in a bucket of whatever item that you'd like to bid on. One of the things I noticed is if you if you were thinking of a place to hold it, I can't imagine any place better than Charlie Clark's Orchard. Abs absolutely, it's it, the venue is very is is beautiful and it's open. And typically, we have five to six hundred people at our event every year. Wow! Yeah, it opens at eleven o'clock in the morning. And last year, you know, last year we were really blessed with our weather we thought okay <laughs> oh that's why there was a couple of blasts the, well what happened was in the morning and we were all watching our smartphones you know you can watch the clouds come across and we looked up and at quarter to 11 there were people standing in line with umbrellas wow. at like 1105 the rain stopped and we opened now it is a <laughs> rain or shine event it yes, is a rain totally or shine so. event absolutely it was just fabulous and uh, just do want to add, well-behaved dogs are absolutely welcome. We see, we get reunited with so many of the animals that we've loved and adopted. See, I get emotional when I talk about adoptions. Um, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, they come and see us every August. We are talking Happy Tales. It is Paw Prince on the Mountain. When we come back, we'll put a little recap on it and talk about the rest of the pieces we have yet to cover.
Welcome back to Paw Prints on the Mountain. I'm Tommy Boy with White Mountain Radio. We've got the volunteers in here again. We're going to talk about Happy Tales. We've got a lot more things we've got to cover. So we do. let's kind of prioritize. Let's talk about the, the barbecue right off the bat, the Charlie Oh, Parks. it's, you know, first of all, we did mention that um, it's at the orchard. And of course, um, we will share, not for our volunteers, but for our visitors, the bar is open. Okay. Um, <laughs> We have a wonderful barbecue every year. It includes uh, pulled pork sandwiches, corn on the cob, uh, cowboy beans, cold slaw, uh, a bottle of water. What have I missed, Sally? I think you got it. I think we got it. Um, and one of the things that is important to mention to the people out there is you don't have to have the barbecue to come in. You can come in, you can walk around, decide to bid, Get a bid number and join us. Nice. So yeah, it you everyone is welcome. It's it's a great great meeting and place. And the food at Charlie Clark's is always. Oh amazing. man, it is absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, it is the Doghouse Thrift Store. It is the Humane Society. We mentioned both entities will be there. Correct. There's also going to be the ability to adopt an animal. Right? Yes. Every year we uh, bring our animals. We go through the week before because we want to, again, as Dina talked about, we want to make sure we bring appropriate animals. Sometimes we have a lovely dog that came in as a stray, but 600 people and noise and lights and wrong sound, pet. wrong pet to bring. Right. So we'll bring some animals. If the weather is appropriate, we'll even bring some kittens we've done in the years past. And I, I think we need to really confirm it is free admission. Nice. Free admission. There's no charge to come in there. You don't have to buy anything. Last you year know, I was helping on a, a live remote that we did. I didn't, didn't mean to step on it. No. It's interesting how uh, some of the money is raised and then sort of re-raised, if you will. Somebody mm -hmm. will give oh, something yes. right back. Oh, my goodness. We had a, a, a bidder on, uh, it happened to be one of the pedal assist bikes, bid that thing up to $2,500 and gave it back for, to us to... Uh, Auction to auction again. again, and it went for another twenty-five. So we got five thousand dollars out of that one thing. So you know, when when things like that are going on, and watching the growth of it, that this is a a success, and b something that can continue to grow. Ab yep. Whoops! Ab yep. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and I know Dina has mentioned this before. Just to keep our doors open at the shelter is over sixteen hundred dollars a day, That's 365 days a year. Right. We have to do this because no one else supports us. We don't get money from the Humane Society of the United States or any other organization. We are our own entity. Repeat that, because a lot of people think that's just gonna trickle on down. No, it does not. And when no, Arizona Gives comes, it's one of those days that reminds me of that. Because everyone thinks I just give to the big mom, the big one up on top, yes. and it ain't gonna come down. No, no, our money comes from donations, of course, our doghouse thrift store, grants, and our biggest fundraiser of the year, Happy Tales. Happy Tales. We need everyone to come support us and our animals. Tell the Charlie Clarks uh, the date on it again and the time. August 25th. It's always the last Saturday of August. Nice. So next year, it'll be the last Saturday of August. Um, do we have any events specifically that we're neglecting? or do we want to, If somebody wants to volunteer, what's that process look like? All they have, they can actually stop by Chrissy's and, and talk to any of the volunteers because, yeah, we have, we have so many areas, you know, all of the areas that we discussed, be it adoptions or silent auction, live auction, blitz auction, raffle buckets, we need volunteers. It takes, I think, last year we had, correct me if I'm wrong, 110 volunteers? Yeah, I was going to say 110, 112 volunteers. And to all of us with our green shirts, they're helping and I you know we actually start Friday afternoon we start Friday afternoon at three o'clock we need help set up oh sure you know tear down we don't tear down until Sunday then Monday we all just go on vacation That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Saturday morning a whole, anybody that has a truck car or anything that can haul anything from Chrissy's to the orchard they just come and load it all up we have it all color-coded to where it goes into the event and that's just amazing how many people come to help with that trucks. And Last year or the year before, um, I stopped at Circle K on my way there, and there's a gal wearing a green volunteer shirt. And you would almost think because she knows where she, it's one of those. Oh no, the she was pleased. She was ready to go. She was, here she they is, are. Circle K, she's a couple miles away, and she's ready for the event. She's already ready. Oh yeah. Positive it, attitude, ready to do it. Well, and and every 
you know, anyone with a green shirt represents the Humane Society. Right. So we, we really work hard at educating our volunteers, giving them as much information as, as they can get um, to really help people understand who we are, what we are, what we do, and what we need. I think to that end, bringing a couple animals is brilliant because it is, it's fun and we're bidding on this or that, When I'd love to have that, but at the end of the day, it's about the animals. It is, exactly. it is all about the animals, absolutely. Tom. Have you always had animals there and have you always had the Doghouse Thrift Store on site where those just sort of came into the fold? You know, I, as I've been involved, we've always had animals there. Okay. I, the, this is our 13th year. I was not there the first year. The first year we weren't at Charlie Clark's. I think we were at the chalet maybe or somewhere. Right. And I'm not sure I attended, but I don't believe there were any animals. It is free to attend. Yes. I could literally go and just watch it all be. I'm a business and I got something I want to donate and I'm watching this. What's that process look like? I got something I want to give. How do I get it to you? They, well, the, if it's something physical, you can always bring it up to Chrissy's uh, shop because we're there to receive them. Uh, you can call us and we'll make arrangements to come meet you and pick it up. When we have, uh, if it's a big item, we have a couple of people that generously go pick up those items and, yeah. and bring them to the shop. Call the shelter, 368-5295. All right, closing <laughs> thoughts on Happy Tales? Something we want to make sure we mention before we sign off? We just want everyone to be there and help support the animals and help us earn lots of money for them. Yes, it's grown so much since I've been involved. I guess it started out with only 17 items to sell. And we're up into 900. Far from now. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. And it's just the support of this community that keeps us going and, and brings that money to help with the shelter. And when you think about it, what we make really only covers about two and a half months of, of the costs of that shelter. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Terry and Sally, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you it Tommy. is Paul Prince on the Mountain, and we'll see you next month on Tommy. Yeah.